So intuitively, Edward's curves are quite similar to a circle, but why is that good? Well, let's look at the group law underlying Edward's curves. So the neutral element chosen as user is usually 0, 1. Although we can actually choose the neutral element, but we don't have to go into that. And that's the neutral element. So actually, our neutral element can be expressed in affine coordinates, just using x and y. So there's actually no need for a point at infinity. We do have a neutral element that we can just treat as a normal point. That sounds quite cool. So how do we invert? In contrast to Weierstrass curves, we invert by changing the sign on the x value, except of the y, uh, instead of the y value, just like we did on the circle. So, if you remember, this was the our addition law for the circle, and turns out the point addition law for Edwards curves is quite similar. If you look at the equations, they are very very similar, but we have a divisor, and as I said before, you can think of Edwards curves as somewhat of bent unit circles. So. We have this curve equation of the Edwards curve. If d is a non-square, which is a requirement for us, then addition for all points can be computed with this formula. There's a quite nice proof why d has to be non-square for this to work. If you want, you can look it up in the accompanying literature. but. This is of course quite awesome because now we have an elliptic curve that has a very easy point addition formula, but there's also no need for a point at infinity or for a separate doubling formula. So it's very very easy to compute on an Edwards curve because we simply have this one formula and that's it. No corner cases, no point at infinity, no doubling.